I am Alex Trockney Powell, a senior at Holland High School. And I've come to speak to you today about the discrimination that exists in our city today. Um, we know all too well the horrors of the Holocaust and today the ethnic, uh, the plight of the ethnic Albanians in Kosovo. And because of these extreme examples, we've come to uh, associate discrimination solely with religion, race, and color. But the form of discrimination that I'm here to speak of today is far less talked about and far more insidious. It is age discrimination. Three businesses around the city, and if I may I have photographs in case anybody wants to I pass around to the sure. council members. Um, the Minute Mart in Washington Square, the Admiral Gas Station on Page Street, and the Windmill Gas Station on 32nd Street. Um, all these businesses have instituted policies of discrimination based solely on age. Um, these policies limit the number of students allowed within their store during certain hours of the day. Uh, I've approached the owners of these three businesses and talked to them about their policies and tried to explain to them why, why they're discriminatory. And each store has claimed that with, without such limitations, uh, students, groups of students would come in and steal anything they want from the stores and would avoid detection based on the fact that they are in groups. Um, each store has claimed that without such limitation, oh wait, <laughs> um, the owners claim that since the store is their property, they can institute whatever policies they see fit. Um, when we look back at discriminatory practices of the South that existed before the Civil Rights Movement, we can see the same uh, policies and similar justifications that exist right here in Holland today. Uh, in the interest of objectivity, I've invited the owners of these three businesses to be present today. I'm not certain if they're, if they're here or not, but I've invited them nonetheless to be here to defend themselves, uh, their policies and everything. Um, regardless of the justifications these businesses may give, uh, these policies are fundamentally wrong on two levels. Uh, the first is on principle. These policies deny rights to a certain segment of our population. Uh, based solely on factors beyond their control. I'm certain every member of this council would feel the same as I do if they were discriminated against um, by unequal laws or policies, just like the youth of Holland does today. Whether you agree these policies are unjust or not, the Michigan legislature does agree that these policies and others like them shall not be tolerated, um, and therefore has passed the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act of 1976, and in the highlighted sections of the copy that I'm passing out, um, it does mention exactly the type of thing that I'm talking about here. Um, as you can see, the definition stated in section uh, 301 of that law says that a place of public accommodation is a business of any kind whose goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, or accommodations are made available to the public. And section 302 prohibits them from denying an individual the full and equal enjoyment of the goods, services, facilities of a place of public accommodation because of religion, race, color, national origin, age, sex, or marital status. This clearly makes the actions and policies of these businesses illegal. As representatives of the people of Holland, it is your duty to protect the rights of all citizens within the city. Therefore, I urge the city to take action and prevent these stores and others like them from continuing their discriminatory practices. While the situation isn't exactly a Holocaust or Kosovo, as I mentioned before, it is a very serious violation of our civil rights and should not be ignored or belittled because the magnitude of it does not measure up with what we normally uh, think of as discrimination. <coughs> I, it is also within our grasp to correct. So rather than overlooking this problem, I hope that prudent action is taken regarding this oppression of our rights. Thank you for listening to this. Thank you very much. Um, Andy, I was going to turn to you just to see what the uh, obligations, uh, responsibilities, uh, and you're certainly being hit uh, rather cold on this one too as far as uh, 
city governance of, of uh, this kind of uh, rule that a store would put in place. Uh, do we have any uh, leg to stand on? Well, the, the city has a human relations ordinance, and I'd have to check, but my belief would be that age is a suspect classification under that ordinance. Um, the way that that is administered, of course, is that we accept complaints uh, that might be filed under that uh, ordinance, and it typically goes through an investigatory process by the um, director of that department. And then if there is a uh, really a just cause or probable cause basis, typically they then recommend referral to the State Civil Rights Commission or the EEOC, depending on which um, agency might have jurisdiction on something like this. So um, I would suggest, I mean, I, I certainly am not here tonight to try to give an opinion whether or not this type of business regulation, which I'm sure the owners believe, as you've indicated, is necessary to uh, provide for the structure and the well-being of their business, whether or not that per se violates either our ordinance or the Elliott Larson Act. And I would, I guess I would recommend that if um, there's a desire to want to proceed, I think what should be done is to file a formal written complaint with our Human Relations Commission so that uh, we have an opportunity to take a look at it, but there's certainly nothing um, other than to allow you the opportunity to speak tonight and address the issue that we can do this evening. Well, let, let me just add, I, I would just encourage you to call, um, uh, unless Greg knows the number off the top of your head, but you can just call our office at 355-1310 or just look up in the phone book, the Human Relations Office, and ask for Al Serrano, and I would just tell you that it, the process what we try to do is take the facts of the matter and usually try to resolve the issues between the parties. Uh, if that cannot be done and if there is a basis for the complaint, uh, we are really just an intake agency for these types of complaints that are then turned over to the state. But I say we like to try to resolve them as much as we can locally, but if that is not uh, or cannot be accomplished and if there's basis, uh, for the complaint, the, the city staff, uh, Mr. Al Serrano, can forward that complaint to the State Civil Rights Commission. So if you just call that number in the morning and set up an appointment with him, I'm sure he'd be glad to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. We appreciate that. It takes a lot of courage to stand up in front of a group of people and, and knowing that you're uh, at least on local television, and uh, we appreciate that. And I. No, it's, it's a serious subject on your heart, and uh, you did a great job, so feel good about that. Thank you for being here. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, speak to City Council tonight on an, uh, any item that is not on the agenda? S state your name and address for the records, please. My name is Sue Isham. I'm from the Admiral Gas Station. Ah, okay. If you notice, those three stores that he named all have an elementary school across the street. Mm -hmm. The sign is not there for high school students. We do not tell them they can only come in one at a time. We tell the students from the elementary school. The kids don't seem to have a problem with it. They stand in a line. There's never a problem. And I do not feel it's discrimination at all because that would be like saying a 14-year-old who we won't let run register, then we're discriminating because they're 14, you know, and. A daycare provider can only have six kids. Well, if she has six kids there and her friend wants to bring a, or her daughter wants to bring a friend home, they can't because there's six kids. Would that be discrimination too? You know, we're not daycare providers. We're not licensed. We don't know anything about kids. Why should we be responsible for more than one kid at a time and, you know, risk them falling down or getting hurt or whatever because we can't take care of them. It's not our job to take care of the kids that are running the street. And that's all I have to say about Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Well, it sounds too like we might have a, a little bit of a communication situation. You're not really targeting your, your rule toward high school students who, right. um, of course, you're representing, and, and perhaps uh, there might be a, uh, an identifiable problem with smaller uh, kids, so perhaps clarification of the sign or something would be uh, in order. But I'll let you guys work that out. We really have to move on this evening. And we'll, uh, the city also has a mediation process that we support through um, a donation of tax dollars that uh, can sometimes be used uh, to sit a couple of different parties down to talk over differences and maybe work out some some options and clarify some things. That's another uh, option to do. But if you call the city manager's office tomorrow morning or the human relations office, um, 
you can at least make your complaint official, and then we'll try to maybe bring the parties together and see what we can do. Thank you both for being here. Is there anyone else who'd like to 